Hey, so before we get into today's episode, we wanted to add a little bit of a disclaimer. The video didn't record. No, um, uh, we have no video for this. Uh, yeah. So sorry. Uh, it's gonna make the YouTube experience again a little less good, like it kind of yeah. was in the in the infancy of in the old days. Yeah, as in like a month ago. Sorry um, about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, we do have some fun stuff, so please keep uh, stay tuned, keep watching. Yeah, our deck text legacy today. So we'll get into all that in a second, guys. Sorry about that. Yeah, enjoy it. But again, we apologize. Hopefully, it won't happen again. <laughs> Thanks, good. guys. Enjoy the episode. Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Thank you guys for tuning in, listening, watching, wherever you're doing it, how you do. The podcast app, SoundCloud, YouTube, of course. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Patreon. Is that it? I always think there's one more. What'd you say so far? Facebook. <laughs> I haven't been paying any attention. Facebook, Twitter. Twitter. Patreon. Twitch. Twitch and Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. Um, One of these days, I'm going to get it all without a hitch. You and will at some point. It's going to be smooth. I want to take a second. We actually didn't plan this. I do want to take a second and talk about our Twitch um, because we oh, just yeah. released in the last week or so mm. a new series uh, with a good friend of ours, Alex, who is hosting some of our streams over there. Just an uh, guy. Parks and Alex have been doing a great job with the streams, Heck providing yeah. a lot of content, hopefully to you guys who enjoy it a lot. Um, yes, <laughs> but but Alex started a new series. Uh, he's doing a commander thing mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. he's basically trying to get 100 wins before he right. gets 50 losses. So it's the road to 100 wins. It seems a little ambitious. It is a little ambitious, right? I because, think. Because, you know, his current record is not great. You've got a 25% chance to win that game, right? Yeah. I mean, and like <laughs> the number of players aside, the decks vary just so much. Yeah. Yeah. It's, hey... More on you, buddy. If he can do it, I'm going to be so impressed. If he can't do it, I'm going to do something terrible to him. What would that be? I don't know. I wanna... We've talked about this. Yeah. Maybe this is a vote we should have, but we've talked about Ooh. doing like pie to the face or spaghetti to the face. Nothing painful. Shoot him with Nerf guns. But something embarrassing. Uh, maybe a little painful. No, not painful. No, we can't. We can't hurt <laughs> Alex. He's, he's a lovely man. He's a dear friend. He's a, yeah. He is a <laughs> gentleman. And a scholar. Um, no, but we do want to give him some sort of repercussion to look forward I mean, to when he loses. Of course, you can't set kidding. yourself up for a challenge without accepting. Like, exactly. He's got to have something. So, Alex? But on a, w the series itself is really fun to watch. I actually yeah, went on and hung yeah. out with him, uh, oh. I believe, on episode three. Little cameo? Yeah, little, yeah. A little surprise, little cameo surprise guest okay. appearance. But uh, I went and hung out with him and just watched him play a little bit. And mm -hmm. his deck is sweet uh, when it works. Ah, that's that, the key. What did you just do? I just accidentally like stabbed myself. It happens. It's all good. It's all good. Um, no, but he his deck is very cool. I would definitely suggest going to watch okay. that stuff. Uh, there's a playlist on our YouTube channel, so you can check it out there. Uh, I know you, at this point we have three episodes stuff. up. We may have four by the time this episode goes out. Okay. I'm not sure uh, what his stream schedule looks like. But yeah, so go okay. check it out. Yeah. Um, Parks also has been doing a lot of standard stuff uh, as well as vintage cubes, things like that. Um, he's got a very cool Excuse Grixis me? artifacts deck that Ooh. he just did uh, about a week ago. So we Ooh, actually I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah, we need to post it over to our YouTube so you guys can enjoy that one too. But it is still on our Twitch. Grixis, so. that's weird. He can't play Fog in Grixis, right? <laughs> His favorite card. Fog. He does. He, he thinks loves it's the Turbo best Fog. deck. It's weird. And oddly enough, <clears throat> it works for him. Like which he... it shouldn't, right? But it no. does. Yeah. Like, but no one plans for Fog. No, of course not. And I what, mean, who would? Why do they call it Turbo Fog? Also, because oh, Turbo Fog is ramp fog. Oh, of course. So I thought it meant like really fast fogs. <laughs> Honestly, I had no fog, idea. Quick, and I never wanted. <laughs> I never wanted to ask anyone. So I'm doing it. So live. you're doing it live on I, a TV yeah, show. Yeah, no, I never knew what they called on it Turbo a podcast. Fog, but I say TV show, a YouTube did series. You? Yeah, I did say TV show. Wow, I missed that. You can watch us on a TV. I would have crucified you, you had I heard that, but. <laughs> No, I can't believe you. Wow. Yeah, anyway, you got um, pay. we do have some very cool legacy decks for you guys today as per our Monday deck tech episode. This yes. is the first day of our new schedule. Yeah, this day doesn't change, no. so it's well, the exact same. Yeah. Um, but our following episodes will be Wednesday and Friday for this week. 
And so we're going to continue that trend Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, Monday being still deck tech, Wednesday being standard limited, and then Friday being the day that we do our filler fun day. Yes. Uh, which is the day I always look forward to. Filler so. fun Friday. Friday fun day. Friday fun day filler day. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sunday fun day just sounded good to me, but I'm, I'm all right with the yeah. filler fr- fun. Shoot. Um, that day we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. But with all of our Duck Tech episode days, Woo. we do kick it off with our random card of the day. Yes. Uh, this is always a fun segment. Uh, I don't know if it's as good as our Kiki Weekly. I really like the Kiki Weekly, <sighs> but I think this is more fun this when is, we actually get to do it. Yeah, this can be interesting for sure. <laughs> it's very Unless interesting. Unless we get like, I'm trying to think of some vanilla creature. Grizzly bears? No, because they're everyone loves grizzly well, bears. That's fair. Which is so funny because it's a terrible card <laughs> that everyone gets to say, oh, you know, how do you hate bears? But it's like kind of a historic card in exactly. a way. Exactly. Um, exactly. Well, let's see what we get. All right. Are All you right. ready? Three, I'm, I'm always ready. Two, one. <sighs> you doubt? You got this. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> this is from Tempest, by the way. It's an uncommon. Doffy Mind Ripper. <laughs> it is a 2 1 for four, three colorless, one black. With shadow, I don't even know what shadow does. This creature can block or be blocked by only creature with shadow. Okay, yes, no, no I, I didn't sense. know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, sacrifice the Mind Ripper. Wait, what? Sacrifice out the Mind Ripper. Defending player, all right, chooses and discards three cards. Use this ability only if Dothy Mind Ripper is attacking and unblocked. Wow. So this is weird in a few ways. First um, of all, the art. <laughs> like oh yeah. my gosh i, I know, know you guys can't see this but mm. where do you think its head is i don't know <laughs> can be at either end exactly that's <laughs> what i was about to say i think it's the red end i think so too and does it kind of makes it better but i'm not sure okay so no, this part doesn't. like <sighs> what you got to say about this <laughs> it's too bad for four i think at two mana this would have been playable and limited uh yeah but limited maybe only like here's like the, the thing the thing okay go ahead you go first you have a choice with this card mm-hmm. to either get in for damage probably mm-hmm. two not many creatures i'm gonna assume have shadow well okay putting it in context though during this block there would have been, been some creatures there would have been shadow. some yes so there would have been less than normal, though, so you do have to assume you probably get some damage in with Right, it. right. So maybe we'll say you get three turns of combat with it. Sure. And then, if it's attacking and unblocked, you can sack it, they pitch cards, which is, like, okay, but it's never really as well, good as you want if you don't get to pick them. So here's the thing. Okay. Talk to me. Unless it's their You're whole You're at hand. turn four. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, no, I'm you saying... You drop this guy. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Turn five is when you first get to attack with him. Mm-hmm. If they still have three cards in hand on turn five, like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, you're not doing mu- That's so late for that effect. I mean, it's a powerful effect. Three cards is a lot. But, like, on turn five at, like, earliest is when you're going to get to do this. Yes. Like, so, again, you're not like going to get the full three no. cards. And like four mana. Uh-uh. No. Although it is nice. If you get maximum three... Like you said, that is good. Yeah, um, maximum three is great, but like that's so conditional on it. First of all, attacking. Yes. Making it to the attack. True. Um, second of all, being unblocked, which I get shadow helps, <laughs> but that's the only time you can actually use the ability is when it's unblocked. So like after combat, if you didn't sack it, the worst case scenario, they take two and then remove it. It kind of doesn't matter. Yeah. Or they just remove it pre-combat, and you can no, you can't. You don't get use any the of effect. Yeah. You can't do anything. So, and here's the weird thing. Yeah. Is because it's uh, <laughs> is attacking an unblock. It's before damage happens. It's before the damage yeah, step. Exactly. So it's not like you can deal damage and then sack it. Yeah. Which I think that doesn't make it cost four, but that's still nice. It's uh, it's not good. <laughs> no, it's such it's a really bad not. card. <laughs> and it's not even like almost good. Well, no, no, um, no it's it not. is almost good though. I think it's Again, just below almost good. <laughs> if it was, if it was a one-one for two that had this effect, it'd be better. All right, so here's what I'm rating it on. Let's give, let's start doing a scale from one to like five. Okay, five being what? awesome, one being okay. really bad, like just garbage, three being okay, 
Four being good, two being, you know, barely playable, maybe. <laughs> God. This hits the, like, between one and two range. Say, 1. <laughs> like five. Like, that's where this would this be, This is right? so aggressively mediocre. <laughs> it's just up in your face about how boring it is. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yes. I had Triscuits for lunch. For seven days in a row. No, that's just sad. That's not. That's, that's not sad. mediocre. That's just depressing. <clears throat> yeah, this uh, is just back card. Um, I'm sorry if you eat triscuits for lunch every day. Uh, that was if you not- do, please let us know. We'll get you something else. I want to take you to. Chipotle. I'll get you some Ritz. <laughs> yes, with cheese. Straight up in the world. Ooh, you saucy devil. Oh, cheese? bacon flavored Ritz. Bake. Do they make those? Oh, dude, have you never had bacon flavored Ritz? Have you? Yeah, they're so good. Uh really? I'll get them. And all right, all they're right. Good. I, they're I'm willing. Good. I will try any snack mm. once with smoked gouda, which is my favorite cheese. Well, might hey. be known. I mean, if we ever do trivia, like a thousand episodes. Bah, in, bah, bah. What's Kevin's favorite cheese? That's somebody's like smoked gouda. That person wins. They get it. What do you? What do they get if they win Kevin trivia? Some smoked gouda <laughs> <laughs> and bacon flavored grits. Bowl them a wheel of smoked gouda. <laughs> Catch. Here you go. Oh. Don't forget the crackers. <laughs> Jesus. Um. All right. So anyway, Dothy Mind Ripper. Terrible. Uh. Yeah. Thanks. Very for, bad card. Uh, thanks for this card. Guys. But this. Okay. So these are the kinds of cards that I like to get. I do too. Random. I don't are- like getting super good ones because it's like, oh, this is a super good card. It's not fun to talk about. And then vanilla creatures are like two, two for two. Okay. You get a bear. Here yep. you go. What do do? But cards that have an effect that are just terrible is really fun. The effect is good. Don't. But on a four I know. casting yes. cost creature, no, yeah. it's not. You're right. <laughs> You're right, Kevin. Um, yeah. Anyway, moving off of the All card right. of the day. <laughs> Sayonara, freaky crab demon lady thing. So. I don't know what that is. I don't know either. It's a summon minion. Ugh. Um, anyway, Ugh. this is Monday. This is our deck tech episode day. Yes. And today is legacy decks. Uh, we cycle through modern, vintage, and then legacy. So we're at the end of the cycle. So um, we like doing things like, out of order. We that do because that, yeah, that order makes no sense. But we like to watch the world. Um, as we've done for the past couple episodes, or at least one, <laughs> um, I think it's been two. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, we've been doing basically a community deck and then a deck of our own. Yeah, it's two. Um, you're right. You're right. And Will, you picked the deck for It Resolves this week. I did. Um, and we also have a suggestion from one of our Instagram users that we will be talking about. But I think you uh, wanted to kick us off. I did. One. I did. I wanted to save the user. The wow. The community deck for the last. User. I know. I was gonna say the user deck. Don't, don't you dare use us. I don't know why. I'm using. I'm using you, for. Um, a sounding board for a conversation whatever i don't know you're my co-host kevin there's mutual using anyway shut what up. deck are you getting <laughs> shut up uh we wanted to save the uh community deck for last mm-hmm. uh because this is kind of a this is a different this is a different kind of style of deck tech we're gonna do with this yeah we've say? got a special deck tech for yeah. you today so we'll, we'll talk about that so. in a second uh yeah. but the one i'm doing is bug midrange b-u-g midrange um, i love bug which is yeah, bug is a solid combination. Yeah, um, and it's a deck that can get complicated or can just get like jump good. Let me also, this needs to be said huh? before we get too into this. Say, it. guys, this is legacy. Yeah, it's bug. It's not soul tie. Oh, well, it's yeah. bug. Someone get it right. <laughs> some, <laughs> like someone. Well, I I still say Jess guy a lot, but that might just be because it's <laughs> a pretty name. Um, soul tie is too. I can name like a. But cat soul tie. it's bug it is bug it's bug yes um i heard someone uh at a tournament <laughs> say uh it ain't like mardu we're not in uh we left tark here we're not, it's not mardu anymore <laughs> that's great i don't know yes yeah, it, it was funny you had to be uh you had my friend all right so <clears throat> let's go into <laughs> the deck tech. uh like i said this can can get complicated if you make them complicated but yeah this list just seems kind of like junk good stuff. Um, and let's talk about that. <clears throat> so with it being bug, you get some of the stronger spells in magic. Mm-hmm. So this tends to kind of run fewer creatures, more spells mm-hmm. um, to kind of give you good tempo swings. Uh, a lot of them run. Oh, man. Um, whew, you like him. He's the bug card cascade. Shardless Agent. Thank you. Wow. 
Shardless, Shardless Bug is that deck. Right, but yeah. right. But that Shardless you can see in so many decks. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, he honestly makes Bug so much better, but he does not touch this list. So, let's get into which it. Which is weird, actually, I think. I thought so, which is kind of another reason I wanted to talk about it. So, its okay. land base is two Bayou, two Misty Rainforest, uh, Misty Rainforest being the uh, fetch lands, three <coughs> Polluted Deltas, again, fetch lands, mm-hmm. Tropical Island, one Tropical Island, Four Underground Sea, three Verdant Catacombs, and four Wasteland. Ooh, Wasteland. Yes. Four, like, four Wasteland is, yeah, I think, yeah. to me, That's it kind of stands out. Wastelands. Yeah, because not every deck will run four. You want it yeah. to um, get rid of, like, specific cards. Out of curiosity, mm. I might be jumping ahead. Does this run Crucible? Uh, no, it doesn't. It Interesting. Doesn't. Okay, sorry. Go You're right fine. ahead. You're fine. Um, yeah, because that's such a, it feels like a free combo. Even well, though it takes up a card The spot. thing about Wasteland is it's kind of just good in everything because mm-hmm. there's, especially in Legacy, uh, there's a lot of very good utility lands. Yeah, there is. And usually you only play one or two of them in your deck. I mean, not always, but like normally, you know, if you get one, you're in good shape. You don't mm-hmm. have to worry about it so much anymore. So like having just the ability to Wasteland a thing, even if it is just once or twice during a game, that sometimes is all you need just to pull out the win. Yeah, it's um, strong. And it is also important just to be able to wasteland, not even a utility land, just a land. You know what I mean? Yeah, like well, a good land. Yeah, wasteland is not basic land. Yeah, um, but, but I guess dual you lands, mean like, you get them off yeah, yeah. of colors, things like that. You're right. um, that comes up pretty often in Legacy, it does. I would say. Um, yeah, it's, it's an effect that shouldn't be ignored ever. Yeah. Um, I feel like wasteland goes in most things. Most even, things. even as a one-off. Not the deck that I'm talking about. <laughs> well, no, but... <laughs> well, no, I don't think it should. No, uh, it Anywho, so let's get into the creature <laughs> package. 15 creatures, all you see here. Two Baleful Strix, which is... Oh, such a good value creature. Yeah, it's really good. Um, with your early drops, this is kind of doing everything you want it to do. Mm-hmm. So for one blue, one black, you get a 1-1 one, one with flying and death touch that when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card. Yeah, and so, so this is why I'm surprised Shardless Agent isn't in this deck. You can, because you cascade normally the classic play would be to cascade into this or a smattering of other creatures, which I'll let you talk about. Sure. But um, the value of cascading, playing a Shardless Agent, cascading into Baleful Strix, mm-hmm. and then drawing a card is amazing. Because yeah. you get two bodies on the field, one of which has Death Touch, yep. and you replace the card in your hand, so you get to play, you know, you have a play You get a free thing, yeah. Um, it's very which nice. is just great. So I'm a little uh, surprised about the Shardless. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Shardless is, I mean... Playing free cards just seems kind of great. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't. It, it's kind of confusing to me sure. why Shardless isn't because Cascade is such a good effect. Uh, so Baleful Strix um, does everything you want an early drop to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, stabilizes the board, making them not able to swing in early. Um, even though really the earliest plays you're going to see stuff. I guess they're like Swift Spear, uh, Delver, uh, Goblin Guide. There's some crazy plays that you can hit, like. To, I mean, crazy combo plays that you can get things okay. like Grizzlebrand or Emrakul or something. Loop. Yeah. <laughs> that means name. I um, mean, Baleful Strix pairs pretty well against Grizzlebrand, as it turns out. <laughs> funny enough. Uh, <laughs> so the next one, four Deathrite Shaman. Mm. Kind of an auto-include if you're in black or green. Yeah. Uh, I feel it's a like mini Planeswalker. It is, yeah. It gets so many good, so many good effects. <laughs> um, becomes kind of an engine for your deck. Yep. Uh, which is why he's still... It's only like $5. five bucks solely Shoot. because he was banned in modern. He was a lot more than that for- before I the ban. I keep forgetting he got banned in modern. I'm so depressed that he is, but I mean, it makes sense. Uh, yeah, is he too- Should he be on banned in modern? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, he shouldn't. Uh, for Delver of Secrets, the next card. That's um, an interesting include for it me. It is, and I feel as though with the Baleful Strix, with Delver, and the next two cards I'll talk about, I uh-huh. think they're going for more of a really aggressive early okay. to mid game. Okay. Um, which is not something you have to do in bug, um, because you get such good late plays. Yeah, normally it's right. more like incremental mm-hmm. advantage, mm-hmm. but yeah, no, that's yeah. Um, and no Tassiger either, which is Tassiger is great. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Tassiger ends up being a one drop four or five sometimes. Yeah. Is he four or five? Yeah, I think he is. He is indeed. Uh, with a sweet effect. <laughs> uh, so Delver, of course, flip him, turns to a three two with fly. <clears throat> sweet. Um, so the next two creatures, three Tarmogoyf. Yeah. Nice. Naturally. Nice. <laughs> and then two True Name Nemesis. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Yeah. True Name Nemesis <laughs> is just, ah. Uh, is it so protection good. from target player? Yes. Okay. From the chosen player. Yes. Yeah. 
Um, I mean, <laughs> which does does the text having it say chosen player get around like say for whatever reason they play Ages of the Gods, the two one that gives you hex proof? Yes, you are not targeting them. You're just choosing you're choosing them, them, right? That's why that is so good. Sneaky, sneaky. Yeah. Yeah. sneaky that's pretty awesome true name nemesis is solid it, it is a three one it is a clock yeah as soon as it comes down there's often nothing they can do to it sweepers no because pro... i'm honestly not sure because i think protection like if you play supreme verdict yeah. and something's got pro white i don't think supreme verdict deals its damage to it or destroys it no i don't think it does uh, i don't know I, i'm honestly, not sure i'm not sure i don't I've never. This interaction that. doesn't come up for me ever. So. Exactly. It's the same thing. <laughs> Anywho, uh, let's move on to the spells. Um, so, yeah, it's creature package. Like I said, I think it's trying to get a little aggressive in your face. Uh, and it took three in the. Uh, this is an online challenge, um, which is, I mean, hey. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so, four abrupt decay is an answer for so much. Uh, <laughs> first off, it can't be countered, which is great. Yeah. Destroy target and online permanent with converted mana cost, three or less. It's pretty good because like most of the things in Legacy are either super low or mm -hmm. super high in converted mana cost. You hit the majority of things. What do you think? Um, better or worse than Fatal Push? Uh, better. It hits more. I think so. That's what I was thinking. Um, it costs one more, but it's uncounterable mm -hmm. and it hits more mm -hmm. because Fatal Push is only creatures. Yep. Um, whereas Abrupt Decay hits other things, which is important. Yeah. Artifacts, Planeswalkers, <clears throat> Planeswalkers. Yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, abrupt decay is great. Mm -hmm. Uh, so for brainstorm, you need card draw, you yeah, need cantrips it's works nice. great with the fetches. Yeah, it's solid, solid. Uh, probably the best cantrip, would you say? Preordain's nice, but um, so because of the interaction with fetches, I think it's the best. Mm. Um, in a format without fetch lands, it's actually kind of bad, I think. You think so? Um, I think it's not terrible, don't get me wrong, but I think, um, in a format where you can't shuffle your deck after you brainstorm, you kind of just put two bad cards on top of your deck and maybe get a good card. And, like, that's optimal. Mm -hmm. Because, like, you have to put cards from your hand back, so you're just going to draw those cards anyway. And right. so you do draw a card, like, you net a card, but, like, well, you don't actually net. You just replace it. But, right. like, you don't actually, you know, get, get too far away with yeah, it. Okay. Like, it's not like you know you're shuffling and being able to pick some stuff or scrying or anything that's what you're saying um, i mean there are plenty of shuffle effects right and every oh, yeah, yeah. every format I mean, has uh <coughs> the free fetch a basic land evolving ones yeah um or yeah and i mean expanse. i think that's what my, why brainstorm is good is because of that effect like if you couldn't shuffle your deck brainstorm just would not be that good okay i don't think okay i'll give you that uh, four days for a little counter package. Mm -hmm. uh, just a few, eight counter cards, really. Um, but it's nice. Uh, days, days is great. Yeah, being, you might be able to cast it for free, mm -hmm. um, although it's not a hard counter. Um, so instead of paying two, you could return an island from the, uh, your battlefield to your hand. Mm -hmm. um, they can counter, counter a target spell unless it's controller pays one, um, which is a really soft kind of counter, but it will still catch people. <clears throat> Well, and what's great about it is like you tap the island, play a brainstorm, mm. and then if you have days in your hand, you still get to days. Like yes. it doesn't, you know what I mean? Like mm. you get to utilize that mana. It's like you waste it. Yeah. Um, so. Which I, which is why I really like days. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're able to do more things. It's great in popper too, by the way. It is popper legal. <laughs> Check it up today. Uh, for force of will. Yes. Always. Of course. Kind of a yeah. strict upgrade from days. <laughs> yes. Um, a huge update. A huge, huge upgrade, I would yeah, say. It's fantastic. Um, it also works really well with Days. When Days doesn't do it, you True. just pitch it. Yeah. So that, that makes works sense. really well, too. Makes sense. Um, not much else to say about Force. Uh, uh, for him to Torok. Great card. To disrupt a hand, counter decks. Um, yeah. It's nice. Mm -hmm. Discards two cards at random. Sweet. Four <laughs> Ponder. Solid card draw. It's great. Yeah. Great card. Uh, then two Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Mm. Uh, which is probably you can make an argument for best planeswalker, but I'm not saying it is. It, I'm not saying it is. Another conversation for another day. Right, <laughs> right. I don't want. I'm not saying it's the <clears throat> best, but you could make a conversation. You could make an argument for her. We had people vote on Instagram though, and they <laughs> voted Jace. So, how many people voted Lily? Um, two less, remember. right? 
It was something like two or three yeah. less. Yeah, it wasn't that wasn't many. that many less. I mean, Lily's Lily's great. I I get that argument. I mean, Lily's exceptionally. Good. Yeah, so is Jace. <laughs> I just like being I know. a stickler about Jace. And you know how I feel about Jace. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's that good. All right, so moving on. Uh, sideboard. Uh, I said that good, not good at all. <laughs> he's nice. Uh, sideboard, one <clears throat> blue elemental blast, which is kind of weird to me. I, is it to you? Yeah. Again, it's a metagame call, but like, I feel like there are other better counters you could put in there. Like, It's so specific. But it's so good against that specific thing. Specific, but against... It's specific, and it has restrictions against Mm -hmm. four of the other colors of magic. (laughs) Yeah. Which is... It's just weird to me. Um, (laughs) I get red elemental blast because how strong and prevalent blue is. Yeah, okay. But here's the thing. Here's what I would argue. Okay. Um, First of all, burn is always a thing. I mean, yes, but you're You're not... You're going to run into burn. But I, I don't know if that's a big enough, like... And? Okay, sorry. sorry. You're going to run into blue-red Delver. Foreshadowing. Um, <laughs> you're going to run into a lot of things that run red, even if it's not the primary color. Yes. And you're trying to outpace those decks. You know, like, you're trying to get value out of those. And so that's the deck that you would probably most often lose to because they're so fast. I would say, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I've not played with, I could be wrong on that, but like sure. my assumption would be that that's the easiest way to lose. And so to be able to just actually, no matter what, say, no, you can't do that is pretty great. Well, I um, think, I think a better include would have been counterspell. Maybe. I know it's I one know. more, but here's yeah, my, yeah. here's my point. You get to hit so many more things, right? In blue, red Delver, you get to counter their, uh, <clears throat> what's their, force of will or or delver or i don't know whatever you want is the mm-hmm. thing um so for one less mana to only counter red stuff mm-hmm. just doesn't seem like it doesn't up to me and i don't know i mean i could be being very picky and you're right in saying it's a metagame call right like it depends yeah what you're going to be playing against and what you assume you're going to be playing against and obviously there when is... this deck was made they did think red was going to be prevalent and whether to, that's true or to not to their credit there's a black red reanimator two yeah. of those two yeah. grixis delvers <clears throat> uh four color stone blade which i'm going to guess has red in it mm-hmm. what would stone blade leave out um i don't know probably blue oddly enough more on that i later. would say <laughs> um, yeah. Hmm. So weird to me. Kevin <laughs> likes it because Kevin's smarter than I am. Uh, there's one dismember, uh, which is yeah. solid removal. Yeah. Um, three fatal push. Think, Interesting. Yeah. Getting legacy. I like that. Hmm? Uh, fatal push, of course, just being exceptional. Super efficient removal. Exceptional. Yeah. I'm removes saying. delvers. Removes a lot of cheap stuff. This one's weird. Golgari charm. Two of them. I actually don't think that's weird. Surprisingly. No? Um, against token strategies, sure. Um, of which there are basically Young Pyromancer mm-hmm. and Mentor, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. do you yeah. S- like, mm-hmm. I mean, Mentor, it's less good against because they can just I was gonna prowess say, trigger way it up. Less good. But under the condition that they don't have cards in hand, it's amazing against mm-hmm. Mentor. Yeah. Um, and it's very good against Young Pyromancer. That's true. Um, so I'm not opposed to that. It's a little weird to me. It's different. Yeah, mm-hmm. I different. I feel like you would rather go for like just a better board wipe, like Damnation or Toxic Deluge, since you're in black. Yeah, I guess, but not just to give any your... of your creatures die to that, <clears throat> right? Except for Baleful Strix. Well, I mean that's true. Um, I guess yeah, I guess that's true. Your creatures don't die to Golgari Charm, but oh no, True Name does. <laughs> Doesn't that's have protection from you. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I think I might would rather have the Toxic Deluge. I think I might too. Um, just because it hits more. I mean, that's all. Hmm. I don't know. Interesting. It Interesting call. More outs, uh, hey. This is why we're not professionals. Uh, <laughs> one Graft Digger's Cage because reasons. Um, there's one Null <laughs> Rod. Stretch. I mean, yeah. One Null Rod. Activated <clears throat> abilities of artifacts can't be activated. Screws everything that you want to do with artifacts. Mud decks. Yep. Which is, I mean, very nice. Uh, two pithing needles, pithing needles being just unconditional hate against a thing. <laughs> Don't you love unconditional hate? So good. <laughs> Whew. 
about to make a I think need old Jace. Real bad. All right, Jace now does nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I like pithing, pithing needle, pithing, pithing. pithing. It's it can be either one. Both ways, but I really I like know. it because yeah, after game one, it's you know what they have, and there are gonna be cards that they like. If they have Jace in their deck, they're gonna run Jace. Mm -hmm. So just if you've got it, turn one, just get rid of it. <laughs> like really they no can no longer play Jace. Yeah, it's both. Like, it's not yeah. use Jace, I should say. Oh, yeah, they can play him. I guess. They can play him. You, you right, you right. Uh, two spell pierce for just extra counter. I mean, yeah. I guess against combos, mm -hmm. storm, what, what have you. More counter is never bad. Well, anyway, uh, <laughs> two surgical extraction. Yes. Again, because reasons. Um, surgical extraction is fantastic. Hate deleted yeah. thing. It's um, super good that you can play for only two life. Yeah. Or or a black black, but still, um, I guess probably rather play for a black instead but anyway uh, it depends um yeah. yeah i really like bug as a color combo i do too it leaves you so many different options which yeah. the three colors do a lot more than <clears throat> like your two colors or mono obviously um and bug especially i feel like you can go in a few different ways i think you can um and it feels very jund ish to me um you think so? in the in the way that it feels a little bit better than jund and the reason i say that is your sacrifice it feels to me i like playing I will bug give you better that. than jund okay. that's all i'm saying i'm not saying it's a better deck but i like that you good. you get the <laughs> you get the counters over the burn because that's sort of what you're sacrificing is the burn aspect that's and instead fair. you get counters that's fair um which in legacy feels more important um, you know what? Yeah. Okay. I will give because you because you get force for of sure. will and things yeah. like that. I think in other formats, bug is yeah. strictly worse. I think but... modern uh, pre uh, <laughs> elf ban, blood braid ban. Yes, it was probably better. I don't know about now. Um, I think Jund is actually still okay, but it it gets things like death shadow now and yeah, but and lightning bolt, which is just <laughs> I mean it's just great. Whereas bug doesn't. Um, bug True. does get. I mean, both of them get Tassiger, but Bug is a little better at enabling Tassiger. Yeah, because you will play um, more cards. Right? Yeah, more you get Thought spells. Scour, which enables mm -hmm. it quick. Um, and yeah. so I like that. You you get the Delve aspect a little more in Modern. Yeah. Um, but I think overall, Jun's probably still better. In Modern? In modern you think so? Probably. I mean, I might be wrong. Mm -hmm. I, I might be off base. I don't but... know, because they don't have a Cascade thing now. Except for, I guess... Um... Violent Outburst. Yeah. But like, <laughs> but you, you wouldn't run into Jun deck. Uh-uh um there's literally no reason to no cause although it... if you could violent outburst into uh death shadow that'd be kind of cool mm. it doesn't get haste though so it's like yeah True. You, just, you can fatal push death shadow which hurts by the way yeah no it feels if it's really like bad. a nine nine death shadow and they're like one mana I'll just get rid of it <laughs> like that feels real yes. bad but like yes that um, is. that's why fatal push is good <laughs> um interesting but i do i like bug a okay. good deck I'll give a you very that. cool deck i wish it had shardless in that list i feel like it's missing shardless cascade is just so so fun to play with such a broken mechanic i i know i've said this before yeah and i'll say it a million more times i really want more cascade cards i know even i wish it would happen even like a fixed cascade well they tried that and the expertise cards they were like play and... a free thing from your hand it was like Restricted Cascade, where it was like, if you've got it in your hand, you get to play it for free. Well, that's not good, right? Like, that's terrible. <laughs> it's that's not terrible, terrible, but it's like, in comparison to Cascade, it's it, pretty bad. Well, <sighs> I mean, Cascade makes a deck in Modern. That's yeah. where Living End is. <laughs> like, And Living End is pretty good right now. Yeah. I'm t I don't know. You feel bad about cascade you want some cascade yeah i logically life. know that they should never ever print cascade again yeah it's like storm it's they gonna should it's... technically never print storm again yeah it would break a format yeah whatever it touches yeah but it's fun it is fun it's very fun when we do broken things yeah that's the thing about with magic players right is we want all the things until they beat us <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean that's exactly it we've talked give about this a, before it's give like me a permanent that i can pull cards from the top of my deck and play for free let me play a card that says i win the game and then somebody <laughs> plays it against you and you're like okay i don't want this card to be a thing that's anymore. A stupid card why would like, you ever print that, that makes i mean no that's sense. exactly what it happens we always find as magic players you find something to whine about sorry yes. but we do <laughs> like yeah. i'm guilty of it you're guilty it happens 100 percent. Um, just owning that is i think you're a, a step better <laughs> at being a better person in the magic universe oh uh, yeah yeah i think that's an important thing but yeah agreed all right 
moving to the community deck um and what we did with this is we posted on our instagram as well as other social media sites our instagram happens to be the place where we get the most responses yay um and we actually got a good number of responses this time uh which i'm really stoked about but what else um, did we get we got a lot of stuff we got storm we didn't want to talk about storm because we just talked about storm in the vintage episode and they're very different decks but they do the same thing right like you you storm so so we didn't talk about it this time we'll get to storm because i want to talk about storm um we also got bug uh things like that i believe we got yep. dead guy a- death dead, dead guy, guy ale. ale yeah um when we do that deck yeah kevin we need to wow you don't like beer i will I be don't. i will be drinking a dead guy ale that's fine that's cool they're delicious beers from rogue <laughs> brewing you should pick one up they're exceptional that's that's all i'm gonna say yeah okay beer's good um but yeah, the suggest because i drink scotch <laughs> you heard me <laughs> anyway <laughs> um <laughs> the, over there. the text suggestion that we decided to go with is blue red delver we uh, just can't escape delver in deck decks honestly. yeah he's I mean, everywhere. Delver's everywhere this is suggested uh as sort of a they need help with their deck list mm-hmm. um by yeah. the rogue dunn uh who is a very fantastic instagrammer uh mm-hmm. for magic um, we really appreciate that he commented on our stuff and gave us the suggestion. He also provided the deck list to us. Um, he did preface it a little bit uh, by saying it is a budget deck list. Yep. Um, he's spent about 200 on this so far. Uh, so this isn't, when I when I say legacy viable, It keep that in mind. <laughs> like, it's important. Um, he did say also, he knows that he is missing things like Scalding Tarn and Force of Will. Mm. Those things are being worked on. Okay. He has that in the back of his head. So okay. let me just go into it first uh, in a very general sense. True. Sure. Minus his deck list. Let me just talk about this a little bit. Blue Red Delver, as of right now, as according to MTG Top 8, uh, is about 4% of the meta, uh, which is a substantial amount. Yeah. You know, you, not insignificant. It's not insignificant. Delver's great. There's different variants. There's Grixis, things like that. Uh, Grixis is very good as well. Yes. Um, but specifically, Blue Red Delver is about 4%. Um and how the slots break down is somewhere around this. This is sort of the overall template for the deck. Normally, you have about 16 lands. Um, mm-hmm. Normally, in a deck list like this, you're not going to be looking at any of the utility lands. Wasteland and things like that are sure. not going to be in this. Um, mostly just fetches, dual lands, and basics. That's what you're going to be looking at. Um, the, the land slots that he has in his deck list... Four mountains, four islands, four bloodstained buyers, and four polluted deltas. Again, keeping in mind, he does know about the scalding tarns. Those are the cards that he wants to put in there. Um, sure. And I actually like the polluted delta and the bloodstained buyer. I'm not opposed to those as fetch lands. I think right. they're fine. Yeah. Overall, you know, you want to get volcanic islands in there uh, to just really, give you that out. that out, uh, give yeah. you both colors of mana very quickly. Right. Um, but other than that, his land base looks fine to me. Right. Um, aside from those so but again 16 lands he's on point for that from what i've what i've gathered yeah yeah um creature slots you're only looking at about 12 creatures Uh, it's a very low creature density again being a delver deck you want mostly spells um and you do want four delver of secrets so and he is on point with that uh he also runs four monastery swift spear uh four Mm. storm chaser mages and then on top of that he has two bedlam reveler he's running about 14 creatures and that's okay that's not terrible Um, but I would maybe trim it down one or two creatures and focus more on the spell side of things. Um, The Storm Chaser Mage is good. I like Storm Chaser Mage. I don't know that you need a playset. Right, that would be my... (laughs) That's my first suggestion, is I would rather see four Bedlam Revelers than four Storm Chaser Mage. I think two and two is the way to go for me. Well, again, yeah, if you're keeping four... What'd you say, 14? 12 12? is what you would like to get. If If you're keeping that number, yeah, I think Bedlam gets you more i think so um storm chaser is good and I, i've made good. i've made and a case for storm chaser uh, in the past and of course in a deck like this with prowess being so like right. overpowered in a deck like this it's great um yeah. but prowess is also a bedlam reveler and bedlam right. reveler gives you a little bit more top end um so i do like that body. there are two Without i wouldn't flying, put four bedlam reveler honestly not- um i actually i i like the two um yeah i'm okay with two but i'll i also don't really i'm not a fan of the four storm chaser mages okay. i think cutting it down to three even maybe two is fine um, i really like that 
I know, and it's a good card. I like it a lot. Um, so, but yeah, it's it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) as far as creature suggestions go, um, if you want to maybe like this is very aggro centric, right? Like the storm chaser, the swift spear, and the delver all very aggro cards. Even the reveler is, uh, in a lot of ways, it's expensive, but you get it cheaper. Well, no, I was gonna say you don't actually pay for whatever it actually costs no you don't like, this is this is one where you know you're gonna play it for two yeah and then you just do it and then there's, yeah yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> now i gotta kill this thing <laughs> yeah that's yeah. why i like bedlam so much no i agree i agree if he didn't have his like this cost less if this was a some other weird effect yeah i would not like him nearly as much but because yeah. like tassiger he comes down for so cheap <laughs> and he's so scary yeah he's a big guy um so suggestions for creatures a lot of these are going to be metagame calls it depends on who you're playing against what your meta looks like some of them though specifically i believe two i would suggest as auto includes okay um not necessarily auto includes but cards you should consider mainboarding right off the bat all right um first of all young pyromancer um yeah you don't necessarily need a ton of these you could do as a one or two of uh, but to be able to go wide very quickly is an important strategy. Um, yeah. It does die to things like Golgari Charm, as we talked about, sweepers, things like that. Right. Uh, but just having that as an out is very good. Give yourself extra blockers. It gives you a little bit of ideally longevity against things like mentor decks. You get outclassed very easily against mentor decks. Yes. Um, with, as far as the tokens go. Sure. Uh, just because they all have prowess. But um, it is really nice to be able to at least have some blockers for mm-hmm. that. Um, so young pyromancer, I would consider putting one or two in. Uh, I would not put a playset personally. No, yeah, that's the thing is <laughs> going wide is great, but yeah. it's really vulnerable, especially exactly. Legacy. And yeah. you're focused on aggro. You're fe- you know it's it's good at that, but not great. I I think Delver and Swift Spear things like that are just mm-hmm. a lot better at it. So you yeah. want to keep those in. Um, the other one I would also consider uh, probably again not as a four of, but maybe a two is Snapcaster Mage. Um, just being able to pull back some of those things yeah. and sort of surprise opponents out with that uh, yeah. is very good. So I would just consider those yeah. those outs. Um, yeah, he, you can do so much with Snapcaster yeah. and with Flash anytime you want, which yeah. is awesome. Um, you're not holding a counter. Do you have Force of Will in your yard? Yeah. Yes. You got a counter. I mean, it it's really does give you, again, we're looking at giving mm-hmm. yourself outs here, and Snapcaster is yeah. great at that. Again, I do know you're on a budget with this, so Snapcaster's a little on the expensive side. Like 80 bucks? Uh, I think he dropped to 50-ish, okay. just based off of the modern reprint that he got. Yeah. Um, but I, he is expensive, so keep yes. that in mind, especially yes, if you're is. already trying to get those Scalding Tarns and Force of Wills. Uh, that gets to be a lot. So right. I would consider those as main board options. Um, again, you you can take this advice or leave it, but I do think that especially just in general matchups, Snapcaster is great, and Young Pyromancer just gives you that out. Sure. Um, other cards you could consider, maybe even more as sideboard options or just metagame calls. True Name Nemesis, we already talked about, is just great. Yeah. Um, deal three damage basically, no matter what. Yeah, I mean, all the you're time. not. They're have they're gonna have a really hard time removing him. Um, yeah, definitely. Just a very strong creature. Again, not as a playset. Right. <laughs> Most of these are not going to, in fact, all of them are not going to be playsets. Vendillion Click. Um, more as a sideboard option for the click, I specifically. So yeah. Uh, against combo decks, things like that, you want to be able to pull those combos out of their mm-hmm. hand. It also does give you the act, the the out of if you don't have a good hand, you get to, to pull another like card. So yeah. just a consideration there. I would usually run as max two in a sideboard. I don't uh, think I'd put yeah, more than two. Yeah, I think, I think, <laughs> I think even that. one is okay, but it depends on the metagame. Yeah. Um, other option, uh, Grim Lava Mancer. Again, I would focus on about two of these, yeah. max three. Uh, I don't think you would ever go more than that, but just to get mm-hmm. some extra damage in against some of these cards. Right. It plays a little bit against the Bedlam Reveler, uh, which yes. I don't like. That and Snapcaster <laughs> Mage. <laughs> exactly. Uh, um, yeah, so I think if... If you are playing without either Snapcaster, or if you're not playing with both Snapcaster and Bedlam Reveler, you can do then a, it's okay. You can do yeah. a swap on yeah. your side, sure, which would sure. make it better. Um, but Reach is really important, <coughs> it um, is. especially in an aggro deck. Yeah, uh, you can win faster than you might could have. Yeah, um, you put them in a more of a bind where they have to make different uh, exactly. decisions. So um, yeah, I and like it just them. gives you outs when you're on a stalled board or something like that. Yeah. You're able to get some damage in. Yes. Um. So that's why I like the lava answer there. But that's mm-hmm. it for the creatures. Um. Yep. Again, focusing on about twelve, 
14, little high for me, uh, which is what he has at the moment. I don't think that's bad. It's no, two card slots. That's not a huge deal, but yeah. um, I would probably try and stick between 12 and 14, somewhere in that range. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't go higher than 14. No, um, I don't think so either. I think, I mean, it kind of plays to your preference. I would <laughs> rather play with more creatures, but that's and just that's how I play. That's fair. Um, I think it, you're exactly right. It comes down to how you want to play the yeah. deck. Um, yeah. I like playing less creatures solely because you are focusing a lot on the Delver side of things, so to be yeah. able to reliably hit a spell on top is pretty important but i do think that there's there's an argument to be made for more creatures and that's fine Mm -hmm. um but with that template following along you are focusing on about 32 spells just general spells um and you're hitting a lot of the right points with this uh he has things like brainstorm as a four of chain lightning also as a four of gitaxian probe four of lightning bolt four of ponder counter spell uh and then two days and four okay. slip through space, which I have to imagine is a budget call, and that's yeah. okay. Um, but I, I obviously think those are the first things to come out. Um, yeah, I think if you get four <laughs> of any other spell, slip through space goes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, it, I get why it's in there, right? Like as a budget an, option, it's yeah. great. And it's an aggro deck, so you <laughs> it, want that damage. You want to get the damage in. You want to be able to replace it, and it does that very well. Right. But honestly, I mean. Not to be too brutal with it, but slip through space is probably only really like competitively viable in Popper. Um, yeah, I don't think it's really viable anywhere else with the Nivix Cyclops deck. It's great, other than that, sure. I don't sure. feel like it's worth it. Yeah. Um, but you've already mentioned that you're looking at Force of Wills. I think that's great. That's 100% number one. What you need to get uh, Force of Will being arguably the best counter spell in the game. Yep. Uh, being able to play it for essentially free. Yes. Um, is great. <laughs> yes, nice. So yes, get Force of Will. Take the 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 slip through spaces out. Uh, for, for the Force of Will, I would say. Yeah. Um, also, what I would focus on a little bit more is potentially burn plays. Um, this is if you want to go burn heavy. I would consider things like Price of Progress. Uh, when you're in Legacy, nice. being able to hit for extra damage just based off of dual lands is super good because yeah. everybody plays dual lands for the most part. Um, unless you're like elves or something, maybe. <laughs> but, but even still, they've got like some like guys' progress and what, yeah, exactly. or guys', guys whatever. Cradle. Um, but price of progress can yeah. end up dealing tons of damage for yes. very cheap. Uh, so you want to include a couple. I would not do a four of of those. I feel like I keep saying this, but I would focus at two or one depending on your metagame. Sure. Um, I would also look at things like forked bolt uh, as just a way to deal with some problematic low level creatures or just to burn to the face. I would also look at Fire and Ice. Um, again, not as a four of, but I like having at least one in a deck uh, okay. like this just to give you some outs. It deals two damage or it taps a creature and you draw a card off of it. You can do both. Mm-hmm. Uh, so For four or five? I think for in total it's like four, but yeah. I'm not 100% sure. I think each of them are both two. But I believe. It, it's like one in a red and then one in a blue, I believe. Yeah. Um, but it's a very lucrative card. Like It gives yeah. you some outs to a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Um so just a consideration mm-hmm. there. Fire and Ice is a bit more of a metagame call also, yeah. but it gives you a lot of outs. And it can, like it, and it can blank combat. Like if, yeah, absolutely. If there's a pesky something poking in for damage, deal two damage to that and just tap, get rid of something. tap another yeah, yeah. thing. Exactly. Um, so nice. I think it's worth it uh, to maybe oh. at least consider it. Mm-hmm. Um, another card that I would look at is Fire Blast. Uh, deal mm-hmm. four damage for free, basically. Yep. <laughs> uh, is great. I mean, you sack two mountains, but it's like, I mean... You're a low mana curve deck. Um, right. And so if you are considering playing Fire Blast, I would maybe consider upping the land count just a bit. One or two lands. Maybe to 17. Maybe 17 at mountains. top 18. Um, just to give you a little bit more of like a hit with Fire Blast. I'm gonna, um, I am going to say I that's that's one thing I think I'll differ from you a little bit in okay. that I would rather sit on Fire Blast until I'm in that. I've got my board state. Mm-hmm. I'm looking to race and deal my damage now. I'm, I don't need to cast a bunch of other stuff. And that's fair. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think what's key with this deck, and the reason I say that, is one, your early plays are going to be your creatures. Mm. Your follow-up plays are going to be protecting your creatures. Yeah. And so true. I think that what you ought to be doing is leaving up those counter spells and things like that. And so when you get okay. to play one and thing, you know, do something like that, being able to just shoot for four 
in a in a very important position in the game where they've only got four four life left or they've got a problematic creature sure i think that's when fire blast is more important not you know sitting on it so much but that's okay i mean difference of opinion um sure so that's what i would consider there um and i think that's about it for the burn package um again most of these cards are not going to be four ofs in your deck you're going to be looking at just giving yourself those outs um you've got a lot of card draw in the way of brainstorm ponder things like that uh which and Taxian probe um all of which are good i think you leave those in as four ofs um certainly and yeah. and you're gonna hit these cards right you're gonna yeah. get to these outs um <laughs> really yeah like i wouldn't take too much out of it um, i don't i think it's honestly not a bad list no, especially for a budget list you are very close yeah um, i would think I so would yeah slip through space is honestly the only thing that goes in its entirety and then everything yeah. else is just tweaked again to kevin's point to the meta and yeah. kind of to your play style yeah um i think so too if you like the uh the mage storm chaser <laughs> mage freaking play them. <laughs> that's fine and yeah. they're not bad they're not bad cards at no. all storm chaser is great um mm-hmm. i just like trimming the creature count a bit and okay. that's why i'm saying trim a couple of those mm-hmm. just because it's a delver deck i mean honestly that's it um if you're going more like you know goblin guide instead of delver now then you play <laughs> well, well i think you could go goblin guide instead of like storm chaser honestly mm-hmm. um yeah goblin guide is nice uh yeah. and he gets played in delver decks he does sometimes yeah um, right yeah sometimes he's not in every single one but, no um and probably not even half <laughs> no it's less than half for sure yeah i think um, so but i like goblin guide too yeah you like the 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 reason you play storm chaser mage is the prowess trigger he also does have haste um, yeah, I know he's a, a two drop, but you're looking to play Delver on he's turn a one. one three with haste to uh, I, That sounds right. Um, I, I could be know, wrong. But you're looking to play a Delver or a Swift Spear on turn one yeah. and a Storm Chaser on turn two, and then from there on out, leaving up the counters until you can get a Reveler out, mm-hmm. something like that, or just burn them. Um, and so this that is sort of your turns sequence, if ideal turn sequence. Um, yeah. Uh, as far as creature removal, I would consider Dismember. I know you're not going to be able to pay for the black. doesn't actually matter. Um, you just take four life. <laughs> yeah, like Dismember is um, so... Dismember is good enough. You don't really kills care about... Kills a Kills a lot of things. Kills a lot of things. You don't care about paying the mana for Dismember. <laughs> no, no. It's worth it at that <laughs> yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Not many people do. No. Um, and this is yeah. more as a one of. I don't think you get more than one most of the time. I think so. Um solely because you are gonna have to pay for um okay yeah yeah so yeah, like, yeah that becomes an eight if you want if you have two of them you're gonna yeah pay yeah eight life okay for that. that gets okay. to be a lot but i do like that's having fair. it again as an out that's um, fair so yeah i i think that's a consideration again a metagame call if you're in a creature creature heavy true, uh, true, true. meta that's what you would focus on um as far as tempo plays i really like vapor snag um hmm. yeah. i know this is kind of an interesting include I've looked through a lot of lists uh, before this and sort of gathered a few cards that I actually liked that I thought would make good includes okay. and that other people obviously thought would make good includes. Vapor Snag showed up in a few lists. It was, it was not in every one. Again, in a creature-heavy meta, it's great. Um, to be able to, especially against something like a Tassiger, uh, if they are able to turn two a Tassiger, turn three a Tassiger yeah. by delving and then they no longer have cards in their graveyard after that, and they clearly don't have enough mana to play the Tassiger again, and you just bounce it, they take a damage, they can no longer play Tassiger again. Right. Um, I know it's a very specific uh, instance, but it is still good. The other instances you're mostly going to be running into are just straight-up tempo plays. Yeah. Um, it's really good against Delvers, so if you're in a mirror match, it's great because you bounce their Delver. They have to wait a turn before there's flips again, mm-hmm. so it's sort of like a two-turn break for them. Definitely. Um, or three-turn, I guess, technically. Uh, no, two-turn. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of really good interactions that come up with Vapor Snag. It also is just a solid tempo play. If you're going to yeah. be getting in those last few points of damage, it's great. It also does a point of damage itself, mm-hmm. so it helps a little bit there. Um, Correct. Vapor Snag. Run that... Instant, uh, one blue, return target creature to its owner's hand and deal one damage to that creature's controller. Oh, I thought I thought it was draw a card. No, I'm thinking of something else. Another card. Oh, oh no, I was thinking it's not even the effect. I was thinking of um, <laughs> the one we played in the dual decks. That name escapes me. Peer through, peer through depths. 
Yeah, I don't know if that's her name. Reach Through Mist? That is. That's Reach Through Mist, I think, is the one. You, where you bounce the thing and untap two lands. That's the one I was thinking of. Doesn't even draw a card. <laughs> You're thinking of Snap. I was thinking of Snap. Um. Anyway. <laughs> Rich Snap. <laughs> um. Other metagame calls, and these are all metagame calls. I don't calls, think Snap would, would have been bad, though. Uh, I mean, it's... It does the same thing as Vapor Snag, and then you get that mana back. You do, but it's two mana versus one. And you're looking to deal damage. But if you have two snag. mana, it's free. Um, mm, I don't know how free. much I like that. It is free. I would like Vapor Snag more. That's just for me. that one damage. Yeah. Yeah. I do like that it costs one and it turns on prowess guys. Any amount I of like damage that. in this matters, I think, in this deck, because you're just looking to deal the damage. Yeah, quickly. but if you're bouncing a guy, you're gonna be able to get damage in. And why not add a point to that? That could be the the decision of whether you win or lose. <laughs> anyway i prefer vapor set you can prefer snap if you want i prefer um, snap that's fine um other metagame calls spell pierce and a sort of control matchup mm -hmm. is what you want it's very cheap right. to interact with non-creature spells um and they do have to pay mana if they want to alleviate that counter so i would consider spell pierce um metagame call entirely sure. uh you can run up to a place out of these i wouldn't i think i'd focus on like three ish max spell pierce you mean spell pierce yeah. um solely because you don't always it's so conditional that's just, um that, that it's just not way. as yeah. good but if you do want to add some more counters mm -hmm. spell pierce is a consideration um uh, misdirection also an interesting one uh as well as stifle uh things like that just counter abilities yeah. things like that it it helps um stifle hits a lot of stuff yes very stifle everything um <laughs> so just general considerations um and again, when you are building your deck uh, and, and sort of fine tuning it a little bit, make sure that you focus to that strategy of Delver, Swift Spear, turn one. Turn two, hit a Storm Chaser Mage if you can. Other than that, you know, bolts, uh, draw spells, cantrips, things like that. Um, and then always try and leave up the counters from then on out. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to do. Um, you want to sure. be able to just keep damaging, keep damaging, um, and hopefully win very, very quickly. Um, so considerations there but sure. i think that's about all the suggestions i have did you uh, say um fork bolt i did uh during the burn segment yeah i i do think fork bolt actually has its good I place think really good, yeah. um i don't think again you run a four up of it um even as no. a one of i think it's good though like yeah i probably do too but not i think anymore. you do too but not many more um, than that you do have to obviously cut a lot of things to make this happen sure um and so slip through space is definitely the first thing to go um yep. no doubt about that yep. i do think if you would like to trimming down two creatures gives you two more other slots that's up to you mm -hmm. um other things to go i think you could potentially uh cut down on the counter spells and put two more days in and the only reason i say that is because days and force of will work great together um and a lot of times days is free counter spell is unconditional though so that's True. again sort of up to you um hmm. chain lightning as much as I like Chain Lightning, I think you could trim it down to two. Um, That's probably true. I like Lightning Bolt in this a lot, though, so I would well, say yeah. keep that. Um, as far as other other considerations, I think it's really up to you. Trim where you feel it's necessary. If you don't feel like you need sure. as many cantrips, take a Ponder or Brainstorm out, put in something else, put in more burn, put in more interaction. It's totally up to you. But right. um, I think you really have to tune this to your meta, so I, I can't comment too much on your meta. Sure. Um, but I do think these are all cards you can consider, uh, all of which are great in this deck. Sure. So. Now, <clears throat> question for him and for mm -hmm. you. Um, let's say, perchance, you take this to a tournament where you don't necessarily know the meta. Yeah. What do you think the strongest calls could be for sideboard-specific options? Um, again, it's about giving yourself outs. And so right. you want to give cards like, like I do think Fire and Ice is a great sideboard. That's what I was thinking of. I think um, the Dismember becomes stronger in that instance. Dismember as well. is also very strong in that instance. I think siding in a couple Fire Blasts, uh, max mm. two or three, but probably just two, uh, is a good sideboard card. Um, Stifles and Misdirections are fantastic sideboard cards. I think. Okay. Um, Vapor Snag. I mean, a lot of these are sideboard cards, right? But I think Vapor Snag is a great one uh, because against a creature deck, that's exactly what you want. Or snap, vapor snap. 
Um, <laughs> free. It's free. Staff uh, is free. We also also <laughs> talked about uh, Vendillion Click as being a very good sideboard option against combo decks um, mm-hmm. to be able to pull a combo card out of their hand. Yeah. Um, but I would not run more than one or two of those specifically. Um, Grim Lava Mancer, not bad as a sideboard card. Um, a lot of these cards, were uh, when I was looking through lists, some of them were main decked and some of them were sideboard options excuse me i just like well, fell the there. end of the table um, <laughs> right there and some of them were like switched out like some people would have a main board some people would have them side which makes me think okay these are all metagame calls you know what i mean sure, yeah um and so you have to prepare for your meta as best you can but i do think all of these are good sideboard options okay. um i i think you can consider any of these as sideboard cards um i don't know what your sideboard looks like again um you did send me the main deck uh, so I'm commenting more on that, but sure, sure, sure. Uh, if you do have a sideboard built, these are all considerations I would think of. And of so. course, graveyard hate. Put that in your sideboard. Graph diggers cage. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, basically anything. Pithing needle. Pithing needle is always solid. Uh, you can always include one or two of those, I would say. Um, and definitely graveyard hate. Always graveyard yeah. hate. If you don't have it, you kind of just lose to dredge, right? Like, there's no. There is no getting around dredge, yeah. really. There's not a lot it. about pacing it. No. Um, and you also tend to lose more to the Grixis decks, the Delve decks, um, because yeah. you can't really get around that. You lose to Snapcaster pretty easily. Um, and Although he's not, he's not on his own. You don't lose I mean, like 100% to him. But you're vulnerable to yeah, him. Yeah, you're pretty vulnerable. That's fair. Um, to be able to shut off a Snapcaster is also just really good value true um like if you know they play snapcasters definitely siding graveyard hate yeah like, he, he just becomes a two on with flash yeah, which is like, still okay i but... mean it blocks a thing <laughs> good yeah. for it you know <laughs> like i mean sometimes you can block profitably but i just sure. mean in general like yeah you're not gonna get that much value out of it um yeah. so at best he trades but yeah yeah right um but pything needle for planeswalkers is a great great option uh graph digger's cage again against dredge and delve um what other anything else that you can think of for sideboards um hmm no not that come to mind i can't think of uh, any uh blood moon yeah okay you could consider blood Maybe. moon um Maybe. it's just good against any dual land deck that doesn't run red um really even some that do run red if it's just like some red um yeah I it, could see it can hit some hit sure. some decks. So sure. I would consider Blood Moon. That's a little more of a pricey option. Although Blood Moon did drop in price to two yeah. modern masters. So if that helps. Thanks, Wizards. I got three of them out of the like mini boxes that I opened. Yeah. One was foil, which nice. is great. Um Yeah, I think Blood Moon's probably more of a one of <laughs> also. Yeah, a work. one to two. You do not go over two on Blood Moon. Um mm-hmm. for sure. Because it just isn't good against some decks. Right. But, like I mean, Graph Digger's Cage is also kind of the same way. Some of the Graveyard hate, but oh, like, yeah. it hits more decks. Um, Pythian Needle is kind of always good. That's fair. Um, that's you're going to hit up Jace or something with it, and that's just important. Yeah. Um, yeah. Speaking of, I did see one deck list that ran Jace. Jace doesn't feel good to me in this deck. No. Um, I'm not saying he's bad, but he just is a little like slow. No, he's, trying he's, to win with he's bad for this deck. Right? I think probably. Turn four, you'd get to not leave up a counter. Yeah. Uh, well, you, not necessarily. Force of Will's free. Days is free. True, but in in his list, if he yeah. just throws in Jace, yeah, there's that. Not great. But I mean, yes, Force of Will's free. Days is free, so that's nice. Um, you also don't leave up burn mana. You don't yeah. like you leave up nothing. Jace is unless your... you fire blast. Because oh yeah, that's because it's you sack two lands. Right. But I mean, you know, yeah, like it's for me, it just doesn't progress your game plan enough. Uh-uh. Um. It's not bad in certain situations. It can oh, bounce yeah. a creature. It also gives you theoretically infinite brainstorms, which is good. Um, we, theoretically, we talked about. That. Yeah, we talked about that. And I do think fate sealing, especially in a in a format like against miracles, to be able to fate seal is awesome. Yeah. Um, because you know if they divining top something on top, and then you get to play Jace. If they're not expecting the Jace, it's great. They know the Jace True. is there. It's less good. <laughs> Um, although that being said, you know, you can still kind of play around it, but, um, I think it's maybe, okay in specific matchups, actually, but not Actually, maybe in a sideboard, now that you say that, here's my thing. Yeah. Miracles in Legacy is pretty good. Yeah, that's great. Um, so, siding in Jace turns off top. It makes it definitely not as good. Yeah. Um, I don't know. 
it's consideration. If you do have a Jace, they're also pretty expensive. But if you are looking to shell out some money, I would say, yeah, Jace is a consideration. Yeah. Um, as a one of. Only as a one Yeah, of. again. And really only against Miracles, I think. Yeah. Which I don't know if that makes them sideboardable. But ah, it depends. I mean, yeah. Um, right. But yeah, I think that's about it. Um, I do True. hope that this has helped you. Uh, the Rogue done again. Thank you very much for your suggestion. Yeah, we do appreciate, appreciate it. it, and we're happy to help. Um, if you do have any follow up questions, you know where to find us. Uh, we've been talking a little bit on Instagram already. So cool. Yeah. Very nice. Much appreciated. Thank you guys. Um, now, before we go to our cracker pack, we talk about our giveaway. We talk about this every episode. Guys, participate in the giveaway. Please, you get free things. Yeah, free and things are always good. And we know you're listening. Um, yeah, we've already it's had cool. a lot of entries. We really appreciate the support that you guys have been giving us with that. Um, we hope that it continues. The winner will be chosen on July 20th, uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, cool. And we'll be continually posting about about the giveaway as we go Just along. Just as a reminder. Um, and, uh... and this isn't going to be our last giveaway. <laughs> this is our second giveaway, I think, so far, and it's gone yeah. really well. Um, we do have other giveaways already in the works, uh, some with Grand, Grand Slam Box. and things like that. That uh, one is going to be sweet. It is going to be yes. sweet. Uh, we're talking with him actually this week a little bit about that, um, but we've already sort of laid out the groundwork for it. So cool. look forward to cool. that. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it. Anything else before um, we go to our crack pack? No, I am satisfied, as they say. <laughs> that's good. I'm glad you're satisfied. Um, Thank you. <laughs> all right, so here's the deal. We're getting close to new crack of packs uh, uh, with Hour yeah. of Devastation. We need you to find your goal card, which is Combat Celebrant. Do you think you'll find it No, today? Kevin, I'm not going to see it. <laughs> We're going to stay in Amonkhet forever. No, I've already, can't. I've already bought land. <laughs> All right, I have a nice little <laughs> island plain dual land yep. out in Amonkhet. Okay. Someone was cycling it, and I said, hey, I'll take it. I'll take it off your hands. <laughs> no, I'm uh, not going to see it. Um, I hope you get it. I really want you to get if it. If we... Okay. If I get my freaking card, can we, like, put Amonkhet to the side? Well, no, hours not out yet. We can't. We have to do it for a few... This coming week, we have to get through it. All right, but... whatever. <laughs> Uh, why don't you talk about your... Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I don't have a gold card, but I did get a very good ra- or mythic. Uh, Hazarat the Fervent. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I would throw it, but I want it so bad. Are you serious? Me, me, me. Do you want to talk about your pack first? It was lagging with Moto. <sighs> yes, I want to talk about my I pack first. I can't believe first. you got it. Combat Literally, celebrates like... the pick. Oh, I don't uh-huh. even know what else is in here. Um, I mean, yeah, it's the pick. God, you suck. I was hoping you wouldn't get it, so I'd be the only one to get my go- my goal card. <sighs> I want the I want what's best for you. What do you mean you only want? I wanted to be the only one. Ouch. That's all right. I can understand <laughs> that. Um, yeah, guys, combat celebrate. <laughs> I was pumped when I saw this card for three mana, two colorless, one red. He's a four one. If he has not been exerted this turn, you may exert it as it attacks. When you do, untap all other creatures you control, and after this phase, there's an additional combat phase. Additional. That doesn't mitigate their attack, their damage still goes through the first time, and then you get a second attack phase. Ooh, it's sweet. All the attack phases. Dude, red yeah, deck wins. super good. If that I, comes I back. really, really like combat celebrant. I'm glad you got it. It's kind of. It warms my heart. Down in the cockles of my heart. <laughs> what a great word to use. Isn't it? What did you get anything uh, else notable in the pack? Uh did I get anything? Yeah, there's a magma spray. Okay. There's River Serpent, Defiant Great Maw. Uh Great Maw's awesome. Yeah. Um Yeah, so if if Gorgeous McSexy Pants isn't here, I would probably pick uh probably Defiant Great Maw. He's a solid card. Yeah. He's really good. Mm-hmm. At three, if he's alone, at worst he comes in as a two three, which isn't nice. Um, although if you put minus one minus one counters on him, you bounce them from other things. Mm-hmm. You like remove them, so that's nice. Um, and then memory spray, of course, removal. Yep. And you can exile stuff. Cool. Well, wasn't it? I got a very good card as well. Hey, Hazaret the fervent. My favorite god. Yeah, your favorite god. Uh, indestructible haste five four for four three nice. and a red. Uh, can't attack or block unless you have one or fewer cards in hand. 
Mm -hmm. And for two in red, you can discard a card, and he deals two damage to each opponent. I mean, you pick him. Hmm. We've talked about this. You always pick a god. Um, yeah. He is the pick. If he was not in the pack, I actually have a decent spread. Oh, uh, nice. All of my uncommons are, like, pretty good. Yeah, those are uh, all Labyrinth solid. Labyrinth Guardian is just solid two drop, two, three, uh, with Embalm. Trial of Ambition is one of my favorite trials, solely because they have to sack a creature. Diabolic uh, Edict on an enchantment. It's great. Yep. Uh, and it's repeatable theoretically um right. vizier is also good two two flash uh you get to exile a thing pretty cool yeah uh, it's i've found it to be a little underwhelming but it's not bad uh so i'd probably take uh it's between the guardian and the trial um i don't know i really like the trial i, I do might too. consider the trial yeah if um, not his i think the trial yeah i think so i also did get right. final reward which is just good removal greater mm -hmm. sandworm which is just a very solid green creature right uh floodwaters is decent it's not great but it's okay yeah. sparring mummy i've been impressed with with exert uh but only in exert other right. than that it's pretty garbage so yeah i think uh hazard's my yeah. my pick <sighs> yeah we both got two red mythics that's interesting wow that is interesting what are the odds buddy we did it. We let's got start, our gold cards. Let's start deck building tonight. Do <laughs> <laughs> you ever notice he's holding a drum? He's got a drum. Like on his Does belt. he really? Yeah. Oh, he does. How cool is that? Well, it's a war drum. That makes sense. Yeah, it is. Actually, sir, that's a djembe. You're a djembe. All right, guys. <laughs> sir, my father was a djembe. I take offense. Uh, all right, guys. We hope that you have enjoyed today's deck oh, tech episode man. with Legacy Decks. Next week, we'll be talking about uh, Modern modern yes right? modern? yeah um so we're heading like back modern. to modern uh That's we will cool. again post uh asking you guys for a community deck and again keep in mind we do change up our schedule this week we'll be monday wednesday friday uh no sunday episode and no thursday episode so keep that past. in mind uh moving forward that's going to be the schedule we stick to and yeah i think that's it anything else participate in the giveaway yeah, be think, cool hang with us yeah if you have a deck you want to talk us to talk about on monday yeah. if you need help with something let us know you can have our limited expertise and we'll we'll attempt <laughs> to maybe limited. say things you've not thought of yeah that did i undersell us enough i think so think? okay cool we sound terrible um, um yeah we've i've played magic for about a week now so yeah i'm, I'm like at a week and a half yeah, he's a experienced one <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right guys i think Weird. we are gonna get out of here thanks for hanging out with us my name is kevin my name is will and this has been it resolves <laughs>